Well, welcome everybody at this beautiful day. Beautiful day for two reasons. First of all, it's beautiful weather and in the Netherlands we always appreciate that. Secondly, because today is the official opening of Tomato Vision. Tomato Vision is a new facility of Syngenta, specifically focused around active greenhouse. My name is Ruud Kaagman. I'm Global Crop Unit Head for Tomatoes. So in my role, I'm responsible for the longer term strategy and I'm responsible for the portfolio. So I work really close with the development part, the breeders, until the commercial part where we can sell in, in which countries our genetics. What we are going to do today is to share with you something we just recently built for Active Greenhouse. Now Syngenta is a global player in tomato, as you might know. Uh, we have more than 20 different breeding programs all around the world. Uh, but the one for Active Greenhouse is specifically focused in the Netherlands where we have our central place for breeding. Unfortunately, we cannot do the opening as we would like to do it, with bringing in stakeholders, the media, customers, and share and show everything together to, uh, to you and have an interactive day. We have to do it slightly different for two reasons. Uh, first reason, in tomato we have an issue with one virus, tomato brown rigose fruit virus, uh, which makes it difficult to visit the greenhouse uh, because we are really scared of transmitting virus by people moving in and out of greenhouses. But of course the other reason is corona. Uh, that doesn't really allow us to bring in a lot of people. So we do it different today. We try to do it different in an interactive way as much as possible. So you have a live stream connection with us where we are going to present the way we built and designed Tomato Vision and how we are going to use it and the benefits for all our stakeholders and also for Syngenta obviously. Uh, we're doing it in a way that I'm trying to host you. I'm walking inside, I will talk to colleagues uh, and they will tell a little bit how important it is for them and how it will help them in their role. And then we make the bridge to watch how it will help our customers. Because it's a live meeting, we have a couple of rules that we need to obey. Uh, one of them is if there is a question, you cannot ask it directly to me because you probably can see me, I cannot see you. But there is a Q&A button in Zoom please try to ask your questions through the Q&A button. And at the end of the tour, we will all come together with all the people I'm going to interview, and we can try to answer as much as possible the questions that you have. Uh, the other thing is, this is all recorded for internal use uh, for later on. And, and the third one, keep in mind, it's all live, and we have to obey the corona rules, which means distance, which means hygiene, uh, we have to clean microphones in between. We have to dress ourselves when we go into the greenhouse. So some, sometimes it might not go seamlessly, but we try our best and we hope that you enjoy the tour and we hope that we give you a really nice impression of Tomato Vision. Now let's walk inside and let's meet one of the first colleagues we would like to talk to. By the way, the outside is already beautiful. Everything is brand new. They just finished with the gardening and some of the other maintenance stuff. Of course, we start with the hygiene measures because we go into an area where there is a greenhouse. Let's talk to Rick Lotens first. Rick, hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. In your role as regional portfolio manager, can you tell a little bit more why we developed Tomato Vision in the Westland area in the Netherlands? Oh yeah, there are many reasons for that. But maybe we can go up, go up in the same yes. moment and we talk a little bit. Um, in fact, why we are in the, the Westland area? Historical, the whole high-tech greenhouses have started in the Westland area, in fact. Um, the reason of that is climate, climate condition. Here you can make, in fact, the highest productivity over the seas with a natural climate. That's one of the reasons. So, but that's not the reason why we have built here. But that has been the reason why they have developed here the high tech. And you see a lot of um, greenhouse builders, technical tools, who are developing here innovations on crop techniques, who are developing on that. So, globally seen, the Westland area is, in fact, the area or let me say the Netherlands, because the Westlanders may be a little bit too small, but the Netherlands is the area where they have developed all the tools for the high-tech greenhouses. And that's one of the reasons also why we are here. Because it's logic that all this knowledge is in this area, and also people are coming to this area to develop and to discover. So that's the reason why we also are here, because there are a lot cheaper areas where we can build the same facility, but we will not have the environment and the people around. 
En Rick, um, so who is the key audience for Tomato Vision? Who do we want to bring in and work with? Um, in fact, the whole facility here, we have two goals. In fact, 10% of the facility is demonstration, commercial varieties, commercial material that we want to demonstrate to our customers. And then we have 90% is in fact R&D, is development. New varieties, new material, where breeders are working to develop the products. Now from this 10%, that's where our audience are coming from. Of four, in fact. So, and who are the audience who come in for that? Is in fact for the people, first of all, growers themselves, crop managers, people who are busy with the crop, people who want to understand the variety performance of the plant performance of the variety, to understand how you need to produce, how you need to bring the plant in the optimal condition. That's one of the goals. But that's not the only one, because we need to have the connection, we want to have the connection with the whole chain. That's main, on one side, the grower but also the trading, also the category manager, all the, so the retail. On the end, we're producing product for consumers. So, so Rick, what you mentioned is we're going to meet people here that are either growing the crop, but all other stakeholders in the whole value chain of tomato from seed till retail. Absolutely, yeah. And, and that's so crucial because we need to have for two things. At one, ta one time, we want to bring our product to the customer but it is very valuable for us to have input back, to have their experience, their needs, and understanding where we can go in now in four or five or longer time, because breeding is not something you think today, you develop tomorrow. Now it's something of five, seven years that you make it. So this discussion with these people is also very interesting to have our, our way of thinking and our um, focus for our breeding as well. So it is a two-direction discussion, in fact. And, and Rick, one, one question. You mentioned 10% is for marketing, 90% for R&D. What is 10%? What's 90% in square meters? Uh, it's, uh, in total, it's one and a half hectare. Where one hectare is uh, non-artificial and half hectare artificial light. So when we talk about demonstration, in fact, it's around 1, 000, uh, 1,100 square meters. In fact, to be right. Great. Thanks, uh, Rick. And, and one last question when we walk down. And by the way, it's a beautiful view here from the first floor where we can host a whole group of people, customers, or other stakeholders. Uh, one last question. So this is built in, in the Westland area. I mean, this is not meant for active greenhouse growers in this area. Eh? Oh, no, no. It's not, the focus is, in fact, globally. Um, globally, that means the Netherlands is one of them, the North Europe is one of them, but including America, including Mexico, including Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Korea, all that. And more and more to go more than that, because it is not only um, for a normal production system, because we have seen the artificial light was popping up around 10 years ago, what is already quite dominant, in fact, in the production system. But we have now also the cooling system was working very well, What means in fact, you can theoretically go over all kinds of regions, areas, to deliver this kind of technology and to produce in that way. Thank you. Of course, where it is financially attractive. That's also important. Thanks, Rick. Point. Thanks, and that's important <laughs> as well. So, I mean, it's for growers and customers all over the world. Now, let's talk to Marie. Uh, Marie is the head of marketing communications for the, the Benelux commercial unit. Marie. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Ruth. Marie, thank you. Um, can you tell us a little bit more, why is this so important for marketing communications? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I'm indeed marketing communication for Tomato in the Benelux, and I was involved at, as such um, almost from the beginning, very beginning of this project. Um, shortly, my role here was to make sure people feel welcome and this place reflects um, our company, our ambitions, uh, but also make sure that the customer experience, the visitor experience fits to the needs. Uh, that was one. And secondly, to communicate about Tomato Vision, an amazing um, place to be, I can say. Um, internally, of course, and externally, that you all know we are existing, we are doing uh, this, and we are proud of it, and there is a lot to discover in here. So this is um, my role, uh, and yes, your question? My question yeah. is, uh, we talk all the time about improve, inspire, connect. Um, how can you relate that to Tomato Vision? Yeah, um, actually, yeah, maybe it will be disappointing, but I didn't, I didn't invent or reinvent the wheel, you know? Um, at the beginning, I thought, okay, uh, what are we going to do? Why? 
why do we do that? And I went uh, talking to colleagues, a lot of colleagues from different departments, and um, long conversations, very interesting, very, very in yeah, exciting, pas passionate, but uh, I could summarize this all in three words, mighty words, improve, inspire, connect. This is what we want to do, and this is how we want to do as well. Hey, and then Marie, when you walk in, we have this, this nice entrance, and then we have this huge drawing on the wall. Can you yeah. tell a little bit about the drawing? Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you like it, because it was a bit of a gamble. Um, yeah, we are, we are operating in a big chain. Um, our work as breeding company is very complex, and we are operating with a lot of other people. We can't be successful without these people, these um, companies and, and, and parties involved. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to uh, explain this, this complexity in a simple way. And I thought maybe a drawing could do that because you can draw nice things. You can explain a lot with, with a drawing. And this wall is actually, it's an invitation. It's an invitation to look at, to come in and to uh, discover which part of it you like to engage and to connect together. Um, everybody who will uh, comes here or relates to Tomato Vision is somewhere on this wall. You all are somewhere in this wall. So we can talk about it. Uh, plus, I thought um, uh, during these conversations I had with colleagues, um, we, are, we are proud of what we do and we like to have fun and we want to be accessible to you. So I thought the drawing fits these uh, values as well. Let's just talk and talk to each other. That's, that's the world story, Ruth. <laughs> Thank you, Marie. I really like it, <clears throat> and it is really attractive to go inside, and we are going to go inside to talk to the next colleague. Uh, but in between, we will share some facts and figures about the building and about Tomato Vision. So we will be back in 30, 40 seconds. We are now in the, the demonstration part of Tomato Vision and I will discuss now a little bit further with Chris Groen. Chris, uh, in your role as product manager, uh, you are in contact with the products and the customers mm -hmm. uh, from both sides. Can you explain a little bit more why it is so important for you in your role? Yeah, thank you Ruth. Hello. Um, yes, as a product manager, this uh, Tomato Vision is a really nice facility to have. Uh, and to show our products to customers. It's, uh, as you can see outside, we are really in uh, the neighborhood of uh, the Glasshouse area of the Netherlands. So closer to the market you cannot uh, be than, uh, than here. And uh, Tomato Vision is really designed to be our showroom to show our products to the customers. So both our uh, existing varieties as our newest innovations. And I really believe that this will be for us a place to be where we invite customers, meet customers, 
to discuss with them about uh, plants in the greenhouse, about the product here, and also to discuss with them what they are looking for, uh, to be inspired by them and get and inspire them as well. Uh, so it works in both ways. Um, as you can see, we are here in the presentation room where we show our uh, different varieties, both a newer portfolio but all, also older uh, varieties. And uh, yeah, we, uh, what we need uh, uh, when we want to introduce uh, these kind of innovations to uh, the market is really have a good connection with market, with the value chain. So I think this uh, tomato vision is a really nice asset to, to play a role in this. So it's not only about <coughs> uh, understanding the product from a grower perspective, mm -hmm. but also from traders, retailers. Yes. So we want to talk to as many people as possible to yeah. get an understanding why a certain product or a trait is important for them. Yeah. Hey, and now we have around 20 beautiful varieties here. And um, maybe you can share a little bit about some of the varieties we see here. Yes, uh, a lot of people will be familiar with these uh, baby plums that you see here because they are very popular varieties, very well known here uh, uh, in uh, Europe. And, uh, but um, Ruth, did you ever heard about Maluno, which is a pink beef tomato? It's very popular in Poland, so they really like uh, the nice texture of it. And this is also one of my favorites, Dubo. It's a very nice uh, mini Samorzano type and you can easily grill it or put it on the barbecue. It looks nice, it tastes fantastic. And uh, yeah, very close to you, you see also Olmeca or Cumato, which is uh, an earlier innovation from Syngenta. And it's a really uh, nice uh, product with a very good taste and yeah, distinguishing looks as you can see yourself. Thank you, thank you Chris. Uh, I mean, it's beautiful to see the varieties here, but of course we have many more varieties in the greenhouse and I think it is time to go to the greenhouse um, just to show them to you. Um, we have to redress ourselves to have the protection to go into the greenhouse, so that means that we are going to leave you for a few minutes uh, and we'll share with you some uh, other slides and, an, and a small movie about the design of Tomato Vision. Uh, so that will give us a little bit of time to, to redress and we will be back in two minutes. Thank you. We needed a little bit of time to dress ourselves up because of all the hygiene measures. We are in the greenhouse. Uh, this is the demonstration part of the greenhouse and we are going to talk to Arthur van Marwijk. Arthur is product development specialist uh, and we have some questions to him. Um, Arthur, first of all, thank you for being here. Can you tell us a little bit more about the varieties that we see here? Yes, I can. So uh, those 20 varieties you've seen are just a selection of the 120 varieties we have here. 
So total surface is about 1,500 square meters. Um, those 120 varieties uh, consist of yeah, commercial, pre-commercial and uh, reference varieties. Um, of course, they cover all sub-segments from yeah, very big to very small, from red to purple to yellow, etc. Um, we planted just after Christmas, so they're yeah, almost half a year in a, in a greenhouse now. We start to pick fruits around mid-March, so for about two and a half months now. Hey, and Arthur, in your role, it is really important to collect data of Absolutely. the new varieties that we are testing. Can you tell us a little bit more how that goes, what kind of data we collect? Uh, of course, we collect uh, yield data and average fruit weight, but also uh, data regarding the intrinsic values like sugar, acidity, uh, bricks, juiciness, etc. Um, so, with all that data and the technical knowledge we already have uh, from our varieties, we can in, uh, advise and inspire our customers. And uh, Arthur. Um Unfortunately, we cannot visit or have our real customers here uh, in life. Um, how can we solve that? How can we still share with them the experience of the new varieties and share them everything we've got in here? Yes, for that route we have our uh, Microsoft HoloLens. Uh, it enables us to connect with our customers virtually. So, in fact, we can visit the crop uh, with them just if they were with us. So. But for that, we recorded a video, and I propose we have a look at it. Have a look at the video, yes. To enable our customers that want to visit our tomato vision, we have this HoloLens. It enables us to give them a virtual tour in our demo greenhouse. I can call them via Teams. It has its own account, so it has its own OneDrive, so I can drag in data, I can drag in any file that I want. I can talk to a group of people and I can explain what nice varieties we have. So I will put it on. I will open the menu again. With these apps I can either invite colleagues or go to the OneDrive to have a look at some data regarding the yield, for example. Let's have a look here at this file. Okay. Take some time. And then you can see again I can swipe with my hands. It looks a bit weird when you are watching me, but in fact uh, I can talk to anyone. I can talk to customers from all over the world and show them yeah, what nice new varieties we have and give them all the information, all data that we have collected here from the very beginning. So I can also um, call people via this feature. So I can open the menu via my wrist and then via Teams I can call anyone that I like. So we have the first sessions planned with key customers to uh, show stuff in our demo because they cannot enter our greenhouse due to the TOBRFE, so the Rugose virus, but also the coronavirus is uh, troubling. Of course, it's a very nice tool and a nice feature, very futuristic. But of course, we will we prefer to welcome you face to face in our demo greenhouse in another time. Thank you. It's allowing us to still keep connection to customers and to show them our products here. Um, I have one last question to you, Arthur. There is a lot of technology that we put into this greenhouse. Can you tell a little bit more about the technology in, in comparison with the old greenhouse that we were using? Okay, I can. So, uh, yeah, of course we use the latest standards and technologies, but uh, yeah, look at the greenhouse route. It's uh, seven meters high. The construction is fully white coated, uh, covered with diffuse glass, uh, with double coating, so very high light penetration. The vents, as you can see nicely, are covered with netting, so uh, they prevent insects to fly in. Um, apart from that, uh, what's very nice is that for each group of segments, we can manage the climate specifically. Um, so, for example, the cluster tomatoes are grouped in one unit. 
and yeah, the climate is specifically dedicated for that uh, type of fruits, type of plant. Um, yeah, that's really different from our old situation, so that's a, a great plus. Um, apart from that, we've also a unit here, as you can probably see on our left side here, um, a unit with artificial light. Uh, we will show there uh, later this summer. Um, so we have everything under one roof, I would say. Um, yeah, and that in fact enables us to mimic in the best way the grower conditions. And yeah, that will help our breeders to select in the best way for new potential blockbusters. Thank you, thank you, Arthur. And you mentioned breeders, and I think we definitely want to talk to one of our breeders who is uh, who is here. Uh, thank you. Let's let's walk to Haoyang. But it is great that we have all the technology in one location now that we can mimic several climatical circumstances. We can mimic lightning, artificial lightning. Um, so in one location, you have the whole world coming together, which will definitely help us in our breeding and our efficiency and efficacy in breeding. But as I mentioned, of course, we want to listen to one of our breeders as well. Uh, how young is the breeder located here? Uh, one of our breeders located here. And let's see what she can explain us about tomato vision. Hi Young, good day. Hi. Hey, hi Young. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more what tomato vision means for you as a breeder? How will it help you? Yeah, sure. Uh, tomato vision is a modern facility. We're very happy to have such a, a new greenhouse uh, for breeding. And uh, as you know, so to selecting the right condition is very important for us. Uh, in this, uh, this greenhouse is made exactly for the conditions we need. Uh, it can apply uh, specific uh, climates uh, for different segments. Uh, we have uh, units without artificial light and with artificial light. So all these uh, uh, enables us to generate uh, growing climates uh, just uh, the same as uh, commercial growers uh, that is uh, representative to the global active greenhouse market. Uh, having the right condition for selection enables us to uh, have good quality trials, also to generate uh, reliable data. These aspects are very essential to us uh, to make the right selection. Uh, therefore, cycle after cycle, gradually, will, it will increase the breeding efficiency. That's great to hear. So breeding efficiency, breeding effectiveness. And of course, uh, do you have something new that you can share already with us? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, here I have a box of fruits. This is a new hybrid that is being tested currently in this greenhouse. It's a loose yellow cherry. Uh, it has a very unique taste, high sugar content, high acidity content, uh, combined with a crunchy texture. Uh, so it gives you a fresh flavor when you uh, taste it. Uh, and if this uh, hybrid uh, is passing the test at the end of the cycle, we will promote it to the next stage. And uh, hopefully you will see it on the market soon in the future. Thank you, Hao Young. And this is really nice. Uh, I can tell you, I brought some of these with me home last time, and my kids really loved them. So the most important critical jury, they liked it. <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going uh, back to the demo part for some more presentations. Uh, we have to redress ourselves. Um, so we will go back to a few questions towards you. I want you to keep in mind that uh, we have a Q&A at the end of the tour. So please, if you have any questions, Type it in. The people I talk to will be there with me. So we are going to talk to Arendt Schott. Uh, Arendt is the, the regional director for EAMI and has been involved uh, with the project from the beginning. And Arendt will do the official opening, uh, the best way we can do it, depending uh, because of the circumstances we are in. Arendt, welcome. Uh, maybe a few words from your side, and then we can move to the official opening. Thank you very much, uh, Ruud. It's true I'm the regional director, but I would like to underline that this building here in the hall, uh, what we like to reach, is a truly international uh, item. Uh, Rick already reserve, um, referred to it. When you go nowadays to any high-tech greenhouse in the world, you can find this technology, and that's why it is so much of a, a point of reference. And that's exactly what actually would like to be here, is a point of reference for our breeders, but also a point of reference for our customers. And next to a point of reference, it is also a point where we would like to meet each other, see our customers directly in our breeding material, and having a direct exchange about what they need, what they want, and what we have in the pipeline. So we think that with this, we can really also accelerate innovation. And talking about innovation, 
Ruth, I think I would like to say a, a big congratulations to you and, you and your team because I have never seen something like that. Last year we were here signing a contract with Mr. Bassi. Now one year later we are harvesting the tomatoes from these plants. We are showing the tomatoes, we are fully opening. And I have to say as a former product manager for tomatoes, I've always dreamed to have a, 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 a greenhouse like this to show our stuff to the world. So congratulations, big congratulations. And with this, I would like to do the official opening. By coincidence, I had a scissor in my, in my pocket, so don't worry. <laughs> Can you hold the microphone? Yes. I, I'm not sure how good the scissor is. <laughs> and if this is we open this fantastic greenhouse. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Arendt. And, and what Arendt said is absolutely true. This is built under enormous time pressure and it is done by a really dedicated team. Uh, and I would like to thank the whole team that was very much involved in the whole building of this. Uh, I also would like to thank the people behind the scenes because making this live meeting possible is not easy, uh, especially because nobody can see each other and, and everything is done from a distance due to Corona. So many thanks for all the people involved. Um, we are going now to the Q&A. I can imagine there are some questions. Uh, feel free to type in your questions in the Zoom meeting and we will try to answer as much as possible in this very warm location. Uh, let's see, Marie, are there any questions? Okay. I will go there and, and I will call the question. You can add Zoom, you can scroll in. And you need on belt. So the first question is, uh, what is the main added value that Syngenta brings to its clients with this research center? So who wants to answer, wants to answer that one? Rick? I think because it's... So what is the main added value that Syngenta brings to its clients with this new research center? A uh, very good question, in fact. What is our goal and what do we bring for our customer, ourselves? The key point is what we want to bring is two directions. First of all, for the customer, that we are able to explain better our genetic value. Genetic value to produce it, because we have the greenhouse behind us. On the other side, also to con communicate and discuss with them together how to position the product and what are the market opportunities. Because we have a global scope, we have a global input, in fact, and when we are able to bring from over the world some ideas to develop the product is of course fantastic for our customer. Next to that, we are also open and we like also to share new information, knowledge from our customers because we want to develop again something new for them in the future. That's our goal. So let's move to another question. Thank you, thank you, Rick. Uh, another question is when do we expect the first visitors and how many are expected? Now let me try to answer uh, that one. Um, due to the circumstances today, we, due to the circumstances today, it's really hard to invite customers physically. Now, the good thing is that Corona is improving day by day by day. So hopefully, very soon we can invite customers physically. But you have seen already that through technology, in this case the Hololens, but there are other tools uh, that we can still show the varieties to our customers or other stakeholders. Now, the demonstration part and the meeting rooms, they're open, so we can bring in people. We just cannot go into the greenhouse because it means you're too close, too close together and Corona doesn't allow it and we are fully respecting all the rules around that. So hopefully, very soon, we can bring in physically some customers. Until then, we have technology, which is working. We've tried it. Um, and we have the, the marketing part where people can, can come in and talk and brainstorm. Um, then there is another question, and I think, Rick, it's, it's one for you as well. It's, yeah, it's from, uh, from Greece, from Petros. Um, he is asking, can you tell two, two three, four varieties uh, in the greenhouse uh, that are new, but are also for the Greeks, Greeks, Greek, sorry, Mediterranean market? <laughs> Very special for Greek. Now, in fact, 
the moment you talk about high technology, the moment you talk about cropping and active reno, as, as we use the name, that's a moment where you say the varieties are shootable over the globe, in fact. So because we don't need to breed specific for a country, because the conditions are the same over the countries, over the globe. When you say what is attractive for Greece, um, then I say uh, clearly we see also in Greece a trend to convenience food. We see clearly a trend there to all kinds of new material healthy food. Yeah, one of them, Yume, is of course a very nice product what is in line for that. We have new cocktail tomatoes where we see clearly that there is a demand for more smaller size. We have the baby plum, the baby plum where we talk about the sweet ale, we have the duel, we have the bamano range of products was absolutely attractive for the Greece market, new markets, but like everywhere, new markets are developing. I hope to give the answer for Greece, specific. This was specifically for Greece. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Uh, let's take uh, another question. Uh, tell us about the Rugos virus. How devastating is it for active greenhouse tomato? And what is Syngenta doing to overcome this issue in the short or long term? Uh, it's a good question. Um, to overcome, you talk about now or how many, uh, Short and long term. I mean, there are. Rick, so, take that one. Looking to the Goza virus, of course, and, and, and big trade in the moment and the, and the market for the growers. Um, as well for us, because we, we are very concerned about that, and of course, we want to keep our facility free of that. So, in short term, what we need to do. In fact, there's only one good answer, hygiene. Hygiene is the only way of working. The only what you need to do, the most important what you need to do, the Rugosa virus is to stay out of this door. So long as you stay out of this door, no problem. The moment it's in, then you are lost. So a lot of hygiene. Of course, we are looking also for resistance. And we know in the wild species, the, the resistance exists. So that's, of course, already a very important point. But be aware, before we have this resistance in a hybrid and usable for the grower to produce, it will take another four or five years, of course. So it's not something for tomorrow. So we need to make the bridge from today to four or five years later to secure that much as possible farms stay free of, everybody stay free of. So hygiene is the most important. One more question, and, and uh, then, we, then we close the session. Uh, one question is about Yume. Um, when will it be commercialized? When will it be visible in the supermarket? Who wants to answer that one? Chris? Hello. So yeah, Yume uh, is already commercial now and is available in some countries, but not everywhere, because it's not uh, grown on large scale in every country yet. But, uh, for example, in uh, Benelux and in Denmark and in uh, Germany, it, will be av it is available and it will be available uh, for the rest of the year and also in France. They are working with this variety and we are still working on developing this variety in much more countries than we, are, we have now available. And, of course, it will be introduced in the other continents as well very soon. We have some productions running over there. Um, I want to close the Q&A. I notice there are many more questions, and feel free to send in more questions, and we will answer your question as much as we can. Uh, I think when we close the session, there will be a slide with some information about who you can contact. Um, for now, I really would like to thank you a lot for your uh, participation for joining the session. I hope you liked it. As I mentioned, it was all live, so it probably it wasn't perfect, but we did the best we could. Um, and thank you a lot and hope to see you soon in Tomato Vision.